Elder George Q. Cannon next addressed the conference. The duty of bringing our brethren from the nations of the earth was one that we could not neglect, and each person should prepare himself to contribute before the adjournment of conference for that purpose. There were many honest souls who would gladly come and mingle with us if they had the means. Letters came from different countries requesting aid to enable them to get here, and the saints should not refuse to give the assistance they asked for. The speaker then directed his remarks to the subject of entering into and encouraging home manufacturers. He clearly portrayed that the policy of importing what could be manufactured here was a species of financial suicide. He mentioned the manufacture of paper, showing that although it might cost more to make that article here than to import it from the East, it was most beneficial to manufacture it because that which was paid out for wages, raw materials, etc. was kept in the territory, and the whole community was benefited. He also stated that this was the case with every branch of home manufacture and industry. The barrier to progress in this direction was that too many looked after the immediate return of the dollar instead of the benefit of the whole community. Elder Cannon spoke next upon persons who had speculated in the real estate business, showing that the great majority of the saints felt to take the wise counsel given them and held on to their inheritance, which some took advantage of this to sell their land because they could get a high price for it. Those who held on to their land might not receive so much means all at once, as though who thus speculated, but they would be blessed because they had not yielded to temptation in this direction. The getting of the rock for building the temple was next dwelt upon. About two hundred boys should learn the business of stone cutting. The, the employment of girls and women in typesetting and other branches was next mentioned, and the speaker showed the employment of ladies would not injure any business in the least. He advocated very strongly the necessity of teaching not only boys but also girls how they could make a living without being dependent on others. A boy should learn a trade, whether he should ever have occasion to rely on it for maintenance or not, for it tended to discipline the mind and form business habits. No people needed skilled labor more than the Latter-day Saints. They had the Zion of God to build up, and it had been hoped that the rising generation among the Saints would do it. If this work shall devolve upon them, they must be trained to bear off its responsibilities. Boys could make themselves far more useful by learning a skilled trade than by being clerks in stores. If the young would properly educate themselves, there was a glorious future before them. The speaker then discoursed upon the blessings which had followed the saints because of their giving heed to the counsels of President Young, in developing the agricultural and other resources of the territory in preference to mining. He next alluded to the policy which had been pursued by the people here towards the Indians. They had demonstrated that the policy of President Grant, so far as this matter was concerned, was correct. It had been predicted, and would be fulfilled, that the Indians would some time become acquainted with the truth, and it should be a subject for prayer with the saints that God would prepare their hearts for it.